our number one responsibility to all of our constituents, whether it's users, creators, or advertisers, is ensuring the safety of the experience on the platform. And that has really been our, our foremost commitment over the past several years. And we've done a number of things. We've basically boiled it down to a framework we call the four R's. And the R's are basically removing content that violates our community guidelines and doing that as quickly as possible. Reducing the exposure that users have to sort of borderline content, things that don't violate our community guidelines, but just aren't a healthy part of the ecosystem. But at the same time, raising up the voices that are important, uh, factually correct information, uh, like things like our Watch Next panels that make sure information that's accurate from sources like CNN or Fox News are actually surfaced when a user is searching for particular information. And finally, the fourth R is rewarding. And that's around rewarding creators that are productive, helpful parts of the ecosystem with the opportunity to monetize. We really see monetization as a privilege, not a right. We launched a $100 million fund that's dedicated to amplifying and developing new black talent um, and making sure that we are giving voice to the voices that have been lesser uh, presences on the platform. Of course, we're always asking for more. Uh, and a question that I ask, I get asked by our clients and, and our teams quite often is about screening content before it goes onto the platform. You know, why can't a, a giant like uh, YouTube and Google uh, human review all, or maybe at least more of the content before it's published? People and machines do uh, different things, um, both very important, but both complement one another. When you're operating a platform that I'm sure everyone's heard the statistics, about 500 hours of content is uploaded every single minute to YouTube. We have other 2 billion people around the world accessing the platform. So at that scale and the speed at which we need to operate, that's really where machines come in. The problem really with AI is that it's not able to um, understand nuance very well. So the way AI works is we train it with models and examples or videos that we want the AI, the machines, to go out and find. But in order to actually populate those examples, we need people. And we need people to write the policies, we need people to screen the videos, to provide sample, sample examples. We actually find that then when you execute the system, the machines are actually more effective at taking those examples and actually taking that content down or making sure ads don't appear against it, depending on kind of what category of content it is. So for me, it's actually very much about both of these things coming together um, and, and the power actually across humans and, and machines. Standards mean consistency, and only with that consistency can we get the industry working together to address risk. The aim around that is to, to enable Debbie and the other platform uh, to no longer serve several masters with different agendas. I think what was happening in the past is that all of us, well-meaning as we were, uh, were going to Google and Facebook and Twitter and all and, and all of the other platforms with our brand safety demands, but each was slightly different. And now we have one body seeking to create um, one set of standards. Um, and one of our main work streams has been to establish consistency of standards of language across the industry um, in terms of what is suitable and what is unsuitable content or what is brand safe and, and, and not brand safe. Having a healthy ecosystem is good for everybody, but having standards that we all work across that are consistent allows us to innovate in areas that maybe YouTube is not going to, right? That is still of value to advertisers.